So, we come to uh, the concluding lecture uh, of this 10 lecture module uh, online course on numerical problems in process metallurgy. So, I will discuss today uh, macroscopic mass, momentum and mechanical energy balance. So, yesterday what I discussed in the context of you know momentum conservation uh, as well as the Navier Stokes equation. So, uh, those are really uh, you know microscopic in the sense um, that relative to this the treatment that I am going to give you today, uh, because we are talking about position dependent velocity and position dependent pressure and so on and so forth. But here you know we will not talk about position dependent features. So, it is much more macroscopic in treatment uh, flow rate through an entrance exit flow rate etcetera, which are parameters you know uh, specific to a volume or specific to a surface those kind of parameters we will be discussing. Now, uh, to be able to do you know the good starting point in macroscopic mass momentum and mechanical energy balance uh, is can be done on the basis of uh, Reynolds transport theorem, but I think uh, let me not complicate the discussion at this stage rather you know uh, talk particularly with respect to uh, what is relevant uh, to metallurgical engineering students. Okay. So, if you consider uh, you know mass and we will consider of course, steady state and I will demonstrate with respect to unidimensional scenario. Mass transfer along, uh, uh, fluid flow, uh, uh, momentum transfer along one particular direction. Okay, but uh, you know momentum being a vector quantity, so you can uh, really split it up uh, into different components and perform carry out the momentum conservation in x, y, z direction. So nothing is, uh, you know, uh, the, the subject is trivial in that sense. So demonstration will be done with respect to. steady state and unidimensional uh, phenomena. And we know that for example, if you do mass continuity the, or the mass conservation the continuity mass continuity. So, suppose if you have you know suppose you have a convergent a divergent nozzle like this okay, and this is the exit diameter suppose and So, this is d 1 and this is d 2 okay. and uh, we know that you know at steady state whatever mass enters uh, the rate at which mass enters uh, through 1 2 is same as mass which leaves. In doing so, uh, you must be knowing those concepts which is not the purpose of discussing here. For example, when you take a velocity okay, and then you multiply velocity with the cross sectional area and you must realize that area is characterized by its normal. Okay. So, you are talking of dot product between two vectors. So, therefore, and then area is characterized. So, you have to consider for example, normal is this direction, the flow is in this direction, angle between them is 180 degree. So, you should be able to know that the inlet quantity is going to appear as a negative quantity. On the other hand, outlet the norm normal is directed this way. The flow in the normal to the plane, uh, you know, uh, is uh, directed along the same direction. So the angle between them is zero degree. So this is going to so it is output minus or up, you know uh, the, the quantity evaluated at output minus the quantity evaluated at input and the origin of the negative sign. So this must be little things must be known to you. So the expression if you have unidimensional phenomena the direction is x. So, we can say that the expression of mass continuity can be given in terms of under steady state conditions okay. and this can be you can start with Reynolds transport theorem then you can you know uh, consider the steady state phenomena and understand take a control volume and over the control volume you can apply Reynolds transport theorem, apply the condition of steady state and then you can you know those dot product things that I have indicated and you can arrive at this particular formula. 
these expressions you must be remembering all the time okay so that you can use suitably i will demonstrate it in my last problem that how mass and momentum continuity are uh, you know such expressions are going to be utilized okay in the so v is the velocity normal to the area and v is normal to d1 so this essentially tells that if the diameter is increased here if you have a constant velocity so this is v into a is the volumetric flow rate multiplied by density is the mass flow rate so the rate of mass entry at 1 is equal to rate of mass entry this is equal to 2 okay at 2 and this essentially tells us that since so we can say that for constant density okay then the diameter 1 okay uh, v1 d1 square is equal to v2 d2 square so therefore if the diameter at the outlet is increased two times the velocity is going to be decreased by 1 by 4 according to this particular ratio so you should be able to know that if i give you a velocity you know here and the area here and suggest that there is this area is uh, two times uh, more than this area so this is d2 is equal to or the diameter is two times more than the inlet diameter so you can say that the velocity is going to be at this cross section outlet cross section is going to be 1 by 4 or only 0.25 times which comes out from this consideration now if you apply the same concept to momentum conservation so and then conservation then the macroscopic expression for a momentum conservation can be expressed in terms of for example if you have a momentum you know in and momentum out in that case is equal to momentum in and momentum out is equal to zero that means there is rate of momentum in to into the domain and rate of momentum out from the domain they are exactly identical in that case we understand that there is no net force acting on the system so and this follows very nicely from reynolds uh, transport theorem if you can apply it to momentum conservation in a macroscopic uh, uh, from a macroscopic uh, consideration now if you do momentum conservation for example in the same problem and then you say that uh, you know uh, evaluate the momentum so uh, the momentum basically i am not writing you know uh, i could i could have written that uh, so the you know if you write reynolds uh, so p suppose is the momentum and then the subsequent you know okay dt and that is equal to control surfaces and then this is n into rho v into that is uh, the expression which boils down at steady state where p represents m times v momentum and and n or eta in this case eta represents momentum per unit mass is a specific property so that is equal to essentially velocity so a flux of momentum and then you can say that this is nothing but v times rho v into and this essentially it represents the net efflux to the control surface because there is an entry and there is an exit here okay so the and this is rate of change of momentum and that therefore based on this we should be able to write here that the net force acting on the system is therefore minus momentum in because it is a one dimensional phenomena so the vector products really does not matter here so we can say it is uh, v times and you can remember that this is nothing but the mass flow rate term okay so therefore we can say uh, m1 that is the standard notation v1 plus m2 v2 but that the mass flow rate is constant according to the continuity equation okay so therefore we can say you can replace this and then we can say that this is equal to m dot m dot is the overall where m dot 1 is equal to m dot 2 is equal to that is the notation i am using and then you can say v2 minus v1 
So that is there is a we must understand that there is a finite mass flow rate both the velocities are not identical one velocity is higher and this essentially tells that since v2 the velocity at the cross section is smaller than this. So, therefore, on the control volume we will have a force which is acting in the reverse direction because the net force acting on the system is going to come out to be you know mass flow rate which is a positive entity multiplied by scalar quantity which is positive and v2 is smaller than v1. So, this is going to be overall a negative quantity which essentially indicates that the control volume the force will be acting in this particular direction. Okay. So, you can perform uh, had it been you know suppose this geometry would have been an inclined one then I would have written you know the momentum conservation along the x direction momentum conservation along the y direction and I could have similarly said that what is the x direction force and what is the y direction force. In this case of course, because of the orientation of the problem you know I would say that f x if there is no force acting on the y direction and the f x force which is negative which depends on the mass flow rate. So, you can apply here. So, v 2 can be given as I have indicated here from this. Okay. So, you can substitute it in terms of only so the inlet velocity is that typically known because at inlet typically we who have the gauges you know the measuring gauges available to us the outflow informations are not normally known to us. So, we can say that from the continuity equation okay, we say that for constant density. So, you can say that v 2 is is equal to v 1 into a 1 by a 2. The geometrical features will be known to us, the inlet condition will be known to us, outlet will not be known to us. So, therefore, v 2 can be substituted in terms of v 1 a 1 by a 2 minus v 1 and if you take that common and this is So, the force can be calculated because the inlet conditions are all going to be known to us, the geometrical features will be given to us. So, therefore, we should be able to calculate that what are the net forces which are acting on the control volume. Okay. So, now with this uh, I go to next discuss the mechanical uh, energy balance equation and the Bernoulli's equation. So, if you look at now the mechanical energy balance again this also can be derived uh, from Reynolds transport theorem very easily. So, those of you who are interested I suggest that you read you know uh, fluid mechanics book uh, where you will find out that what is Reynolds transport theorem which of course, is not discussed uh, you know uh, in metallurgical engi engineering curriculum, but in chemical engineering as well as in mechanical engineering fluid dynamics courses the starting point of discussion in fluid dynamics often becomes. Uh, the Reynolds transport theorem. So, the mechanical energy conservation equation is represented as and then we will solve the problems okay. mechanical energy balance equation. I will show the, the potential energy kinetic energy plus kinetic energy plus uh, the pressure energy at you know. Uh, is conserved and so therefore, we can say that uh, if we say that p by uh, rho plus v square by g 2 g and then we can say g z. So, this is the potential pressure energy and these terms are all power unit mass m g h is the potential energy we know and so g z will have a dimension of potential energy per unit mass half m v square is the kinetic energy. So, just v square okay is going to have a measure of uh, the kind of you know uh, uh, your this is not g here okay this is 2 okay so v square is kinetic a half m v square is kinetic energy so v square by 2 essentially represents kinetic energy per unit mass and this essentially tells us that uh, at section 1 is, is equal to the same thing at section 2 p divided by rho plus v square by 2 plus g z and then this is equal to 2 and then we can say that there is if the shaft work is done and heat is input to the system 
this is the heat input per unit mass uh, and this is shaft work done by per unit mass. This is the mechanical energy balance equation as it is represented you know derived from uh, on the basis of Bernoulli's energy uh, Bernoulli's uh, sorry um, on the basis of Reynolds transport theorem. Now, this essentially indicates that if you take 1, 2 as the cross section here, so 1, 1 I would say in terms of this and 2, 2 in terms of this now, okay, and then you apply, you sum up the total, uh, you know, uh, pressure plus potential plus kinetic energy that is measured with respect to, you can consider that this is the z is equal to 0, the arbitrary datum that you have chosen. So, the pressure plus kinetic plus potential energy at section 1 is exactly equal to the pressure plus potential plus kinetic energy at section 2 plus if you have put in some heat and suppose if there is a fan and or there are frictional forces which are you know uh, consuming a part of the work done by the system and sustaining the flow. So, this is what it is and the moment you say that this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0, uh, the limiting uh, you know mechanical energy balance equation now is going to be known as the Bernoulli equation okay? and that is, so if you ignore the frictional work, if you ignore that the system is isothermal, okay, so there is no heat input, in that case this is 0, shaft work is 0, frictional losses are 0 and in that case we can say that sum total of potential kinetic and pressure energy at section 1 is exactly equal to the energy is mechanical energy is conserved in the system that is what is the meaning of it. Now, with this let us look at a problem, look at the problem. So, several problems we are going to look at. Okay. Let me see what is the time now. Okay, we have. Suppose we have a ladle which is being drained into a tan dish okay. and there are three different outlets strands in the tan dish and it is operated under steady state, the tan dish is operated under steady state and this is the depth of the liquid which is constant. So, in this case what happens is that you have the bath depth is not changing as a function of time. So, whatever liquids are going out through the strands okay, is exactly matching the rate at which molten steel or liquid is coming into the tan dish. So, this is our tan dish, this is our ladle, draining of transfer of material from one vessel to another vessel and, and how do you maintain it? And there are valves here. You know, which controls the flow rate, which ensures that uh, you know, the flow rates are inflow rates and outflow rates are matched. Now, let us consider for example, a scenario, I just demonstrate that we must understand uh, that uh, the flow rate through this uh, three strands are going to be identical. So, I can say, let us suppose, let us close this okay, for the, so that you do not, so there is only one outlet in the tan dish. Okay. Now, suppose I say that I have a control volume which is like this, the dotted line. The boundary 1 1 is this one and the boundary 2 2 is this one which is my outlet, this is the control volume and this is the inlet. Now, if you apply the Bernoulli's equation here, we must understand that at section 1, so this is the equation that we wish to apply. So, the pressure here is 1 atmosphere pressure, the pressure here is also 1 atmosphere pressure. Okay? So, these terms really do not appear in the equation, they are identical in the two cases. Both are atmosphere, this liquid is exposed to the environment, so the nozzle tip section 2 is exposed to the environment. Now, this area of cross section is so small in comparison to this, we can imagine that the velocity of liquid 
the rate at which you know uh, the liquid uh, is uh, the meniscus in this case of course is not moving so therefore i can say that v1 is equal to even if there is a little bit of fluctuations okay because of mismatch the oscillation or the movement of the velocity uh, movement of the meniscus is going to be very very small but as such under the condition i have posed the problem that v1 you know that is a steady state operation so that means the depth of the liquid is constant the meniscus is not moving so therefore per se the meniscus the con control surface at one uh, does not you know have much you know translated to its overall area does not have uh, any velocity on the other hand we have velocity finite velocity the discharge velocity here so at section one i can say this is equal to zero and therefore if i say that look the nozzle protrusion here is small h okay this is small this distance is small h that is what this is and then if we apply this then we will find out that we obtain an equation that the at section 2 2 the velocity square is, is equal to 2 times g of capital H plus small h or we can say that the velocity or the discharge velocity discharge velocity is, is equal to square root 2 times g h plus h and if small h is negligible in comparison to the depth of liquid in tan dish then we can say it is a good approximation to say that it is, is equal to h in which h represents the steady state bar depth in the tan dish itself. Now I pose a problem so this is the consequence of boundaries equation so let us say we have a three strand tan dish. this is the problem. So, there are so that means the discharge velocity since it is given in terms of only the bath height above uh, the nozzle. So, therefore, it is understood that the discharge velocity under steady state condition through this q 1, q 2 and q 3 they are going to be identical. Okay? Now, liquid depth is given h is given to be 900 mm and you can see that discharge velocity is this. So, therefore, the mass flow rate discharge is going to be is, is equal to we have area of the nozzle into liquid density. Okay? So, this is velocity. So, rho a into V becomes the mass flow rate that we have understood okay? or that you have seen earlier, but we need to multiply this because we take characteristics of the nozzle which we call as a discharge coefficient okay? which is a value depending on the geometry of the nozzle whether the nozzle is this kind of a shape or the nozzle has a this kind of a shape okay? on this only depends the geometry. So, this is C d is a function of the geometry of the nozzle which is called we call as a discharge coefficient and typically this value will range from 0 0.8 to about 0 0.95 depending on the geometry in some worst cases could be about 0.6 or so. So, that represents the mass flow rate. this is the theoretical mass flow rate. Okay? This is the theoretical mass flow rate and the moment you multiply it by C d that becomes the actual mass flow rate. So, H is so C d is given now the nozzle discharge coefficient is given to be 0 0.9 okay? and then uh, we have given that suppose it is liquid is steel and this contains 7200 density is 7200 kg per meter cube okay? and then uh, it is asked that D nozzle is 40 mm. what is the rate at which material is coming? The discharge rate estimate the steady state discharge rate of liquid steel uh, from the level and we must understand at steady state uh, the fundum m that little is going to be nothing but 3 times m dot discharge that is what we 
and discharge can be calculated exactly with this parameters. So, we can calculate m dot discharge say through nozzle 1 okay, and that is going to be is equal to rho liquid a nozzle that is the tundish nozzle okay, and V discharge and then C sub D. So, this is 7200, this is pi and then we have 40 mm into 10 to the power minus 3 area nozzle. So, 40 is the diameter, so we can put 20 as the radius pi r square is the cross sectional area. Then V discharge is equal to 2 times 9.81 into 0 0.9, 0 0.9 being the bar depth then multiplied by 0 0.9 which is the discharge coefficient. So, 7200 is the density pi r square 20 mm is the radius. So, 20 into 20 to the power 3. So, everything I have put in SI units. Okay. So, pi r square and then square root of 2 multiplied by g 9.81 multiplied by the bar depth which is 0.9 and this will give us a discharge rate of kg per second. That is what is going to be the discharge rate unit in SI units and if you do this then the discharge rate comes out to be m dot discharge is going to come out to be if you plug in all the values then it should be about 3.42 kg per second or which essentially means 205 kg of steel per minute and therefore, now you can say that m dot ladle is, is equal to 3 multiplied by 205 kg per minute which is, is equal to 615. more than half a ton of material is coming from the ladle under the given condition at steady stage operation. Alternatively, the question can also be put in that if the discharge rate is 615, estimate the individual discharge rate or estimate the individual velocity at the nozzle, tundish nozzle exit and a reverse approach could have been taken and following the same philosophy one could get the answer. Now, I would like to show you the application of boundaries equation together with a material balance okay? and this problem. So, we are given that there is a ladle okay? and this ladle is having the characteristics is given as L by D is, is equal to 1. That means, the diameter. So, we have basically L is the depth of the liquid. Okay? So, that is L. And the diameter of the radius, cylindrical shape and vessel, perfectly cylindrical. So, therefore, uh, and this ladle contains the mass, initial mass in the ladle uh, is 300 tons, that is the mass of fluid in the ladle. So, we, the ladle has a nozzle and this nozzle has a diameter, D nozzle has a diameter of 80 mm. The ladle contains steel, so raw steel is 7200 kg per meter cube and similarly the discharge coefficient is going to be. So, we come to 
zero point. Nine. So this is the problem, and at time t is equal to zero, the nozzle is opened, and the material starts to flow out. I want to calculate the complete emptying time of the ladle. It's a very typical problem uh, in you know uh, in metallurgical flows or particularly application of metallurgical balance. This is essentially an unsteady unsteady state problem, okay? Because as material will come the flow out of the system, the meniscus is going to be changing as a function of time. So, this is not a steady state problem per se, but in this case also you know we can somehow apply what we have learned uh, from the engineering boundary equation and that is what I am going to demonstrate that we will have a material balance coupled with you know uh, the information that we can obtain from Bernoulli equation uh, and those two concepts can be integrated. Uh, to derive that what is the complete milk, you know emptying time of the ladle. Now, we must understand that uh, the rate at which the material is going out from the system or the mass is changing and the mass of m represents the mass of liquid in the ladle. So, therefore, this m initially is equal to 300 ton and finally, it is going to be 0 okay, that is what it is. And for m to come from 300 ton to 0, that is the complete emptying time. So, the mass in the system is decreasing as a function of time, that is why I write dm dt, and this mass is exactly equal to, and this mass is a function of time, okay. The mass it is not constant and is actually uh, the velocity density the same thing that we have done earlier area nozzle C d into square root and this L which is a function of time. So, I have embedded that the, that the nozzle velocity. So, whatever mass has decreased is the same mass which has flown out through the nozzle itself and for a very small time step okay, we can say that the velocity is given by square root 2 times g into L t where capital L which is a function instantaneous bar depth. So, whatever is the instantaneous bar depth assuming that the bar you know the time step is small. So, the meniscus has really come down to a very small level not much mass has flown out and under that condition this represents a, a very reasonable approximation of the material balance expression. So, this is a overall material balance overall so this overall material balance energy balance you must be uh, you know uh, for simple systems uh, very spontaneously able to formulate them okay? uh, and this will require you know some practices uh, with solving of problems pertaining to process metallurgy. Now, the mass in the ladle as you can see because it is a cylindrical system. So, I can say mass is equal to rho L pi into r square L this is the mass. Okay? So, therefore, I can say more specifically m t which is a function of time is equal to rho l pi okay, d square l by 4 or which I can say rho l pi l cube by 4 where this l is a function of time l is a function of time. At any instant of time taking advantage of the cylindrical geometry we can say that what is mass and therefore, from this if you apply the initial case. So, initially what is the value of L? So, L initial will corresponds to corresponds to when mass is equal to 300 ton and in that case we can find out that if we put mass is equal to 300 tons here and then we have L is equal to initial is equal to cube root of okay, 4 times 300 
multiplied by 10 raise to the power 3 okay, divided by pi r square little and therefore, this is equal to 3.142 into r square and which is equal to d by 2, but d is equal to l. So, therefore, we can say 1.875 that is what it is and this value will come out to be. So, L initial is equal to this. So, pi no, no so uh, 10 to the power 3 and then we have divided by so 4 times and then divided by pi. So, 3.142 because it is L and therefore, this value will come out to be something like L will come out to be 3.75 meter. You can check these values sometimes you know uh, I may punch in wrong numbers in my calculator. So, uh, so straight forward from here we go to here. Okay. So, we put 300 tons here. So, 300 into 10 to the power 3 kg okay. and then we have multiplied by 4 okay, and then we have pi and then rho L. So, pi is here. So, that means 7200. Yeah, I missed that actually. Okay. That is perfect 7200 and that comes to be and therefore, because L is equal to D is equal to 2 times R. So, therefore, radius of the vessel is given to be 1.875 meter. So, the initial value of L we have obtained. So, because this as I say that from 300 ton because I have established the equation in terms of L. So, therefore, I can say that this equation if we put it here okay, then we can say that this is going to be rho liquid pi r square ladle is constant and that is, is equal to d L over where mass is equal to rho L pi r square L that is what it is. So, this is taken out and then this is, is equal to rho L and this is pi a nozzle. So, we can say multiply this by 4 and then we can say this is d nozzle squared multiplied by 0 0.9 and multiplied by 2 g into L to the power half. These are all constant terms here for example, if you see that. So, you can get a value of this. Similarly, rho L this rho L and rho L will cancel out okay, from both side pi pi will cancel out and then you put the value of r square and then all these parameters g is known to you, d nozzle is known to you. So, you get an equation something like now d L over d t. So, we get I will write it here so that so you can get it like d L by L to the power half transposing L to the power half from the other side and this is going to be equal to 0 0.9 multiplied by 2 into 9.81 multiplied by d nozzle square. So, d nozzle square is 80. So, 80 into 10 to the power zero point nine into 80 into 10 to the power minus 3 square that is the diameter square multiplied by the discharge coefficient okay, and then divided by 4 times r radius that is 1.875 squared and then we have d here. That is the final expression that we have obtained okay. and now what we want to do? we want to integrate this. The limit is upper limit is L is equal to 
0.75 meter, the lower limit of L is equal to 0 and then this is equal to t is equal to 0 to t is equal to t m t. That is what is the expression and then if you integrate it, it becomes a piece of cake okay? and then this is this will come out to be something like if you put the limit and integration. So, you get T m t you substitute all the values have been there. So, you can integrate this this is going to be L to the power half okay, plus half. Uh, so, if you integrate it then you get L to the power half and then this is going to be 2. So, that is from integration and this is 3.75 then 0. So, there is a minus sign here and the putting the limit will change the minus sign. So, therefore, we can say that this is going to be is equal to some constant multiplied by. Uh, so, whatever is the value here. So, this value is I think uh, 36 into 10 to the power minus 4 into T m. So, therefore, uh, is 18 okay. yes. you can get the value here for example, all those things if you operate this term you can get the constant value which I have written to be 36. So, therefore, uh, basically we can have 1.875 L to the power half. So, square root of that. So, no, this is not right. So, so the integrate if you integrate this, this is the net integral of this is this term. So, if you now, so we can put the value here. So, what is here is is a constant multiplied by T m t and this is basically this particular parameter. Okay? And so, T m t will come out to be something like if you plug in all the values and this will come out to be something like how many seconds. So, my calculation shows that it is equal to 1.875 if we substitute all the values to the power half okay? and then we have I think I put the value wrong here. So, this should be L is 3. 75 L to the power half comes here and then we have 18.1 into 10 to the power minus 4. And this is going to be in seconds and this value comes out to be 756 seconds or something like uh, 12 minutes. That is the answer. You may just check the values. I may have done some, you know, silly arithmetical errors. So, principle has been explained. All the values have been correctly substituted. Whether I have got this right or not, uh, which you can just check. But I think it is uh, correct. So, you can see in this particular problem that how by using material balance uh, as well as uh, engineering Bernoulli equation in you know, a concepts, uh, I could find out the emptying time, complete emptying time of a vessel. So, the same problem can be cast to you like you know determine the complete time by which the ladle is half empty. So, the same kind of a derivation only the limit is going to change for you. Okay? So, there I have put 3.75 to 0, the limit is going to now change if the ladle is to be you know half emptied then it is going to be from 3.75 to 1.875 that is what is the problem rest everything uh, remains the same. So, I think uh, with this I will uh, like to conclude uh, my discussion uh, on uh, numerical problems in process metallurgy. Uh, before I leave I would like to suggest that uh, you know you cannot learn uh, or master the tricks of uh, problem solving or you know, become very apt in problem solving unless you practice problems. So, therefore, I suggest that there are three books you should refer to. 
okay, where you will find problems on material balance, heat transfer, mass transfer, uh, chemical kinetics, engineering Bernoulli equation and so on and so forth. So, these three books all the problems that are summarized at the end of various exercises okay, or various chapters. Uh, one is the textbook uh, of metallurgical you know, transport phenomena in metallurgy by D. R. Gaskell. This is this is transport phenomena in metallurgy. In metallurgy or material science, I think metallurgy and material science, similar title is there. So, I think this is one book. The second book is a textbook of metallurgical kinetics. Metallurgical kinetics. Uh, this is by A. Ghosh and Sudipta Ghosh. There are a lot of problems on metallurgical kinetics and, and you can read this a first course. in iron and steel making. If you wish to develop enough sufficient skill in numerical problems on process metallurgy, I would suggest this is my own book. So, material balance and thermodynamic problems you will get many in my this book, kinetics problem you will get many in this particular book and you will get lot of problems on mechanical energy balance, uh, mechanical mass momentum a vectoscopic mass momentum balance as well as heat and mass transfer into this book. So, once you solve the exercises, uh, you know, uh, you will generate, uh, I believe, I am certain, uh, sufficient kind of an expertise given the background or foundation material in the 10 lectures that I have included in this particular module. So, uh, today incidentally is the last day of the year as I am delivering this lecture. So, uh, I wish you success and uh, prosperity in the new year and I think uh, I will also at the same time say please stay safe and please stay healthy, stay healthy uh, and good luck to all of you in your future endeavor. Thank you. <laughs>